Hello everyone, welcome back to Hadoop Varsity. Today I am going to demonstrate uh, how to install CDH with the uh, basic components of Hadoop like uh, HDFS, MapReduce, uh, Yarn, OZ, Pig, Hive in a single node. So we are not going to use the Cloudera Manager. Uh, we are going to install manually by using RPMs and CentOS. So let's go ahead and start uh, the installation. So before that uh, we are going to create a single node uh, cluster on Google Cloud. So so I'm going to name it as CDH single node. Okay, I'm going to leverage complete uh, free memory given by Google Cloud okay it's CPN 52 GB I'm going to change this to CentOS 6 100 GB and allow HTTPS right. so once we provided all the details click on create Uh, this will take some time right so now we have a single node with uh, 8 GB or 52 GB of RAM with 8 uh, core CPU so we are going to log in to the hello everyone uh, today I am going to demonstrate uh, how to install Cloudera uh, the CDH uh, uh, 5.12 version on single node so basically we are going to install uh, different Hadoop components especially uh, especially the different components like uh, uh, Hive, Pig, Scoop, uh, HDFS and different uh, other different components so so in order to do this um, what do we need, what do we require so we require, I mean, uh, we are going to follow the official documentation from Cloudera. Uh, so if you see the official documentation, right, on the left hand side, you can find the various links, you know, uh, how to install, deploy, configure and or configure the different services. But this documentation covers for all the operating systems, um, uh, for all the databases and everything. So it will be a bit confusing if you want to, you know, want to install for one particular uh, node so I'm today I'm going to demonstrate uh, uh, how to install for uh, CentOS 6 uh, 64 bit operating system single node so if you see here right so this is command line installation and uh, remember we're not using any cloud raw so uh, I'm going to install manually one by one okay so So this is this is the one we are interested installing and deploying CDH using the command line. So if you click on this one, so there, okay. If you see here, uh, installing CDH uh, five components, right? So if you, there you can find HBase, Impala, Hive, Pig, and everything. So let's take Hive. If you see Hive, you will find a lot of uh, documentation, right? Installing and upgrading and if you click on installing you'll find a lot of uh, Documentation so it will be quite difficult to follow all this uh, documentation, right? So what I did is I Just extracted the required information from the documentation you know, to uh, To follow and install these primary seven components so today we are going to see how to install all these seven uh, components and single node so so all we need to do is uh, just follow this documentation so, so first thing i mean uh, i am on centos 6 64-bit uh, operating system 
so the first step is um, we need to switch to root user so let's switch to root user okay. so first time i'm creating root password We clear we successfully switched to root user. So the next step is uh, so the next step is install Java. Um, as we know how to uh, develop it in Java language, so it will run all the you know processors and tasks run on JVM, right? So we first we require Java. So how to install Java, right? So first thing is uh, we need to download this. Uh, we have to download this uh, Java. So we'll go to official website go there jdk8 so we are installing java 8 so if you see here our is 64 bit right and we are require our uh, linux so just copy this link okay and paste here let's go right we are, we are going to use a wget wget uh, to get the rpm but before that i think we need to add header information also so just copy this one right. so press enter so it will download this rpm right so if you see here we got the rpm right so the next step is we are going to install this rpm right so we are going to install right. so this this command will install this rpm That's why it is around two seventy six MB. Right. So if you see here, if we got the complete the install and complete, then it is successful. We don't have any surprises, right? So the next step is uh, uh, we have to uh, you know uh, export this um, environment variables. Normally, every service uh, using Java, right? We look for uh, the Java home location, right? So, what we are going to do is uh, home location and other uh, files in bin, right? So, what we are going to do is we have to export these files, right? So, what do we need to do is um, first find the Java location, right? So, your Java location will be so this is our uh, path right where it is installed right so copy this one okay so you have to paste i think both are equal then fine we have to copy here right we are going to export two environmental variables one is jre underscore home this is for runtime environment and another one is uh, java home this is for uh, jdk file so i think the location is same right user jdk 1.8.6 all right so just create a java file just create a java dot sh go to here and then copy this copy these things here These are nothing but
So add these uh, um, this file export commands to your file and then save that file right and then we have to move this file to etc profile day. just move java underscore sh2 slash etc profile right so and the next thing is we have to check whether it is successfully installed or not right so just simply type which java right it is installed in user bin java and just type java command and see whether you are getting this one right so okay and then java c is also right so these are the commands to run the java jars and everything right so we have successfully installed java right so the next step is uh, actual installation of uh, hdfs right so so before we install right just go through this link okay so this link is actually the official documentation we are following right so this is where we are uh, installing all the things right so the first step is uh, so these are the different steps uh, okay so the first step is we have to add the repository right so, so this is a cloud repository you can get this repository from official document here so just just add, click on add cd repository so if you see here right okay download the repo file right so So for six, uh, CentOS 6, right, if you see here, so this one is the one we need, so I just already pasted here, okay, VI, VH, uh, not repo, okay, just paste here, now we need to copy this cdh dot reporto slash etc dot repos dot d here we need to copy this one right so once once we copied here so the next step is uh, if you want optionally add this one also this is fine this is one is optional one Don't require so th this from here onwards uh, we are starting the actual uh, installation so we are installing cdh5 right with yarn we are not going with mr1 we are going with yarn so the so first step is uh, we need resource manager installation so just so you can find all this uh, documentation here right so if you go here so this is where actual uh, from the documentation this is where you can find the you know commands so it will it will provide for all these operating systems so we are on centos right we are interested in these commands right so i just copied these commands and formulated here so the first step is install resource manager it will take some time
right so so these are all master demons for uh, hadouk and yam so the next step is uh, name node right name node is successfully installed so and then secondary name node right secondary name node is completed now we will we'll go to slave nodes right uh, we are going to install node manager for yarn and uh, uh, data node for hdfs at a time so once these are done we are going to install oxy servers also right so once this done this one is also an important one hadoop client where we will submit uh, we will access the file system hadoop file system right so already installed right? as part of this pre earlier version so, I mean, so up to here we have installed uh, the required packages for uh, cdh5 and on so so before that uh, once installed right we have to configure the couple of files before we start uh, the services okay by default uh, we don't uh, receive this uh, installations with the uh, configurations right so we have to edit few files the first file we are going to edit is codes.xml okay so where do we find this file so we are going to we will find this file at etc hadoop corner code side.xml right so what we are going to do is uh, just copy this one just take up the backup okay just take the backup if something went wrong we can right now just edit this file right if you see here we don't have any configurations right excuse me so to add this property so this property is responsible for you know running the name node on 8020 port on local host right save this file so right so once save this file the next one is next one we are going to edit is hdfs site.xml so since we are running on single node right uh, we are going to paste um, the configuration for data node and m node in the same single file if it is a multi node cluster i mean if you have multiple slave nodes then this will be these two configurations will be on different files right so the same the same applies here just copy side xml to dot take the backup of this file also and then edit this file so here right so these two configuration dfs dot name node right it is already there we need only the copy okay. just delete this one paste here another property is this is for data node right so we have data node and name node configurations for hdfs site.xml just save this one right so the next step is uh, since we have given the directories right to store this data files and everything on name node and data node 
so we are going to uh, create those directories okay just create those directories for name node and data node and another important thing here is uh, we have to give the change the owner right see for for operating system syntax the root user is uh, super user root whereas for hdfs file system the super user is hdfs right so we are going to change the root user uh, super user for these two right now now the next step is uh, we have to format the name node before we start the uh, uh, before we start the name node service right we have to format this one so just go here and just type this command so we have to run this command with super user that's why we added sudo right so name node and everything is successfully applied now next we have to do is uh, we have to restart right so you can find this services here so if you see here right these are the service right now installed right so since we completed these three right we are going to start one by one let you have this so you see the status it's not running right so just simply start it's going to log the uh, you know errors and everything into this particular log file under var log how do you catch this right similarly for data node right started data node no third uh, secondary name node right so if everything works successful if you type hdfs you should get the hdfs command uh, options and then let us let us see the hdfs file system right there is nothing there's no error that means it is successfully installed so there's no files right now in the root file system right so what we are going to do is uh, uh, we are going to create a temp file under uh, root in hdfs right so the command is hyphen uh, mkdir okay right it is created and then I'm going to change the permissions for this. If you see here right now, okay, now you will see temp super super group and HDFS. Okay, so we have temp right. So now we are going to create user. Right, so now if you see here, right under this user, we are going to create users, right? So, so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to we are going to use it one uh, user across all these services, right? So, and uh, HDFS requires uh, the operating system user. I mean, whatever the operating system user you'll have, right? For example, for CentOS. We are have right now we don't have any users so but when running any services we require user to log in to run any jobs and services so right now we don't have any user site so we are going to create a user called Hadoop so which will be used across all these groups services right. so I'm going to create These comments are for uh, this first let us create a super group 
okay and then uh, sudo user add hyphen g super group right so since we created a hadoop user right so this is operating system user right operating system centos user so now we are going to create a user under this user this is a, a hdfs file system user right so let's go to the previous command here just type hadoop Slash okay, right. So if you see here, user and type user. Okay, we have Hadoop, right? So if you want, we can add this root also as a user, right? If you want to add root also, you can simply. And root okay now we have root user right since we are running as root user we create a root at uh, this is that operating system this is a hdfs file system this root is a hdfs file system user and this particular root is operating system user right so now we have we installed hdfs and everything right so what we are going to do is we're going to check whether the file system is uh, running are we able to create a file or not right so so let's say we have cdh.repo right if you want to move this local file system file to hdfs right so hdfs dfs is the thing on a command so if you see the distributed file system command for hdfs you can see different commands right we are interested in put command okay we can put the cdh dot repo to temp right so even these are uh, Hadoop distributed file system commands okay so if file is available there then yes uh, our installation is successful right so so our Hadoop's uh, HDFS file system installation is successful. So now let's go to next installation. So the next installation is uh, these are done right. This one right. done. This one is done. Yeah. So we have we already installed yarn also right. We just want to configure the these for yarn side dot XML. So you see. So open this file and right, just add all these properties resource manager address and resource manager address. So these are the different ports where uh, resource manager runs for uh, yarn. Right. right now we are going to start yarn right so yarn started now we're going to start resource manager also if these two successfully started then when uh, yarn is running right so just type yarn right you can see we got the usage for yarn right if you just type right, 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 yarn application right yarn application right so this is the command where you can uh, list all the jobs running on yarn right now we are not get, we are not running any jobs that's why we got uh, mtq so this command will just show you that yarn is running right 
so we successfully installed HDFS and yeah so these two are successfully installed right so the next step is uh, installation of pig scoop and hive right so now let's go to pig oh, this two completed users creation completed now installing pig right just simply type so pig is a straightforward so it all requires uh, just one command right so we don't have any surprises here we got we have successfully it is successfully installed uh, pig so so if you just want to check whether pig is installed or not just type the pig command so we should go into uh, the grunt of uh, this one so if you got this console right then pig is successfully installed later we will run few commands for pig hive and scoop whether the services are running or not first we will install the services one by one and later uh, we will plan to you know run all these programs on pig and everything so just simply come out of that so you now this hive installing hive is something you know tedious process because this pig is uh, it's a map registry job internally under the hood it runs a map registry job right since we already installed these two uh, this is fine but whereas hive the architecture is a little bit different here when compared to these things okay so if you see the hive if you see installing components hive installation right so typically it requires uh, different components within hive so so this requires a different uh, a hive uh, hive meta store and hive server right this one is optional required and hive meta store itself is a different service where it stores meta store in a different database hive server so we have to install these three once installed we have to configure uh, the database for hive so these steps okay so we are going to run this hive hive meta store and hive server and we are going to configure hive meta store mysql database for uh, meta store and then, then we are going to run and see so just run one by one first install hive come out of that pick console so i think it's already installed as part of uh, earlier uh, packages right so just install this one so successfully completed and then just right right so we install all these three right now we are going to configure the meta store so the meta store requires i told you right meta store requires a mysql database right so we are going to install first mysql database right it is successfully installed sorry so next we are going to do is just simply start this mysql daemon right starting mysql daemon and then we are going we required a mysql uh, jdbc connector also so we are going to install this one also so once this is installed we are going to copy 
this particular jar to hive uh, lib directory so this part of this it will load uh, various libraries right so we're going to copy this particular jar where it installed in user share java to hive live direct hive lib directory so either you can copy or you can just simply link that one to this particular directory here i'm just linking this one so once this is done <coughs> installation is done we're going to configure right so so first step is since mysql also new installation right so we are going to first set up for mysql right so we are going to set password for mysql first i am just setting password as a root ok if you want to remove any anonymous users means it's fine just remove all these things Reload, I think we have to reload, right? Right, so now MySQL setup is completed. Just check whether MySQL are we able to log in or not. So, it is a password, right? So, we got the console of MySQL, right? So, our installation is successful. <clears throat> so, here we are going to run a uh, few commands for uh, high meta store. The first step is create database called metastore. This database will will be used by Hive. Okay. So the next step is use this metastore. Right. So in this database, we are going to run uh, this particular schema. Okay, so we have successfully installed this particular uh, MySQL uh, Hive schema. So next step is we are going to create user. This is at database level. This is at uh, user level. Remember this password. We are going to use this password again. Now these things just revoke all privileges and then grant all permissions. Right just flush the privileges and quit right so the configuration for metastore is completed right so right now we have the every configuration in mysql database right but here at this point uh, this moment um, the hive installation is not aware of this uh, mysql database right somewhere we have to point out these properties to the hive right so that we will do in uh, hive site.xml right so you have to configure the meta store to communicate with mysql database right just simply go again etc this time hive corner so here you can see different uh, files right so you have to open this particular file hive site.xml and come here if you see here right we have uh, by default, it will come for, come with the uh, Derby database since we already did with uh, uh, MySQL, right? So we are going to delete these properties. So we are going to delete these properties. So we are going to delete these properties and we are going to add these properties. Remember, here we are mentioning as localhost since we have uh, installed everything in single node. If you have MySQL in another different host, you can simply add here. And remember, the meta store should be same as here. Otherwise, it will it won't work. I just simply copy and the password, username, and everything. Okay, request to keep it also. Okay simply type all here one second 
something mess up here. Delete all these things. Let's go up and see whether everything is fine. Okay. Right. So Description and property first, right? If you go down, page down, sorry. Description, right? Right now, the next step is so once we're done, these two, right? So we're going to start first, Hive Meta Store. Right now, sorry, one second, sorry, it is it, new dot do, I server to start. Right, if everything works fine, then you should get the just check the status, it is running right, and meta store status also. You should check right now. Just go to Hive console now, right? You have Open another session. Um, if something went wrong, right? I'll just show you how to check on the tail. If I'm in the, yeah. So if you see here, first we'll check high meta store log. So if you see here, right, default is the database, right? So what I'm going to do is just for testing purpose, create database temp, right? Right. If you see here, database created, right? So Hive installation is also successful. Later we'll show you how to install, I mean, how to load a table in a Hive, okay? So here. I will also successful. So now let's go to scope. Okay, let's go to scope. 
ओके जस्ट सिंपली टाइप इसको सब जस्ट रूट हियर राइट इंस्टॉल दिस को सो वन स्कोप इज इंस्टॉल राइट देयर आर सम कॉन्फिगरेशंस वी नीड टू डू So, so scope requires a uh, few libraries. Uh, scope is special for uh, loading and exporting and importing from different databases, right? So normally, uh, MySQL and Oracle it won't uh, come as part of scope libraries, okay? Uh, for scope, so we are going to so if for this particular we have a MySQL connector, right? So it is in somewhere in Java, right? So when you are running scope for MySQL database, it won't pick this jar until and unless it is available in this particular location, right? So we are going to copy this one here, right? So just simply type scope and see whether right? So if you see here, scope import. Right. If you follow this particular documentation, uh, you can able to you know load the data from particular database to HDFS or Hive uh, or for different databases, right? So scope is completed. Scope is completed. Next, next is uh, OZ and View. These two are for UI interfaces. Who is for workflow? You know to run workflow on. Uh, to run OG job, Hadoop jobs, Hadoop workflows on cluster, and uh, who is a web UI for uh, you know, managing all this file system, Hive, and everything through UI. So we are going to do these two. So this one is completed, right? Not required. Yeah. So we are going to configure OG now. So install OG. Okay. So OZ also requires, uh, you know, storing metadata in database, right? So this will also come with the DB database, I think, a default database. So we are going to change the database to again MySQL since we have already centralized the database MySQL, right? Since we already installed, just simply log in and run those commands, create user and user things, and simply, you know, add these commands to the OG configuration file, right? And simply run those commands. That's it. I'll show you those things. Right, 
this is also successfully installed so i think which client is also should be installed hmm. this is installed as well uh, you know, along with this particular you know usb package right so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to configure uh, uh, mysql for uzi right sorry something more. okay so once you entered right so we're going to create a database called uzi okay no grant all permissions for uzi and also grant all privileges for uzi then simply quit right so we have created mysql uh, with the particular uh, no required user database and uzi right so so we need to configure and we have somehow tell that uh, to the uzi that uh, mysql is installed in particular host and uh, use this mysql database right so again go to etc uzi corner uzi site dot xml right so here you can see the different uh, configurations right so at the end i'm going to add this mysql uh, configurations okay right right and then again this also requires a mysql jar right so simply copy this one to this here mysql uh, ozil now next thing is uh, so this is so far for client right so we want to run for uh, uh, sorry we want to run a script uh, we want to run this load schema and everything for uz into mysql database right so for that uh, we would require a uz user okay so what we are going to do is uh, simply create a hdfs uh, ntdr uz user once you created uz user right just simply just simply uh, assign this uh, so simply change the owner to super user cd hdfs right hdfs is the super user right now so once you have created these things we are going to run this ogdb.sh so what this will do is uh, it will run this particular shell script and load the required files in uh, um, our uh, mysql database so if you got this one ogdb is successfully created then og we are good if something went wrong then we'll get error okay so it's successful using our mysql database right so the next step is uh, up to here the client part is completed so we are going to run so for particularly for ui we would require an extension you know a javascript files or the zip file right so so once we got this one so we're going to copy this one to I think at this moment I don't think it is required. So I think it is already created. Right. So the next step is simply run. No service. Easy. Right. Just simply check the status. It should be in running state. Just simply type Uzi. So you will get right, help and everything. So another part is uh, we're going to check whether Uzi is running or not, right? So simply here, I think. We'll see I don't remember the port number. Yeah. We see that right. Uh, if everything is successful, 
you will get that OG web console and my particular OS is in this particular host you can simply add local host also so this is documentation and jobs and everything here okay this is so if any job is running uh, any workflows are running so you can simply look into here okay so this is done so I think OG is also done so the next part is uh, Q Q is then you know web UI for uh, HDFS and everything so simply this one is also a little bit uh, file Right, it is also successfully completed. Next, we are going to install plugins also. I think this will also. Right, this already installed <coughs> as part of this uh, this command. So, if you see here, I think it runs on it runs on port number four x. Okay, so simply sudo service view start starting queue so here started right if you go here it basically runs on 8888 port so if it is a first time user it will ask for you know, creation of user I think we created user called Hadoop right uh, so we're going to use that user here So this is the you know UI for uh, this is a UI for Q. Uh, right. So if you go here, in the editor, and if you go text and everything, you will find. So let us check the file system. So you do remember that I uh, created a temp database here, right? So we are reflecting everything here. So just simply go to files. So view, but not HDFS, super HDFS. Okay. I think it is showing us uh, user who uh, you are assuming, but not a HDFS super user. Uh, this particular Hadoop, I think it's not a HDFS super user. Okay, let us check why it is.
start of HDFS only. Okay. Anyway, uh, we'll have few other commands. Let us run these commands. Okay. So let us open HDFS.exit.xml. So we have to enable a few values, proxy users and everything. Then it will point out to the correct uh, HDFS file system, right? So just simply we are enabling the HDFS. Uh, for few we are enabling the Hadoop file system. So simply vi etc Hadoop Conf HDFS site.xml. Just go down to here. Add the property, right? And in the core side dot XML, you have to add these things. Okay. Right. Just simply add here. Right. Since we have changed the HDFS uh, uh, files, right, we need to restart that uh, HDFS demons. So we can write simply a single command which can restart all this data node, name node, and secondary name node. Right, we have successfully installed. Right now, go to view again. Right. Now let's test uh, uh, some components uh, through Q. Uh, I told you right who is in web for uh, HDFS file system, file system and Hadoop components also, right? So just type show databases and execute and see whether we're getting output or not. So from here, you can manage users, you can create users and everything. You can upload files from here also. You can run queries, hive queries. This is from right if you see here right so databases we got two databases so i was running successfully from uh, queue and we're going to check the file system see earlier we got an error right so now we don't have any issue the reason is uh, you have to configure few particular uh, you know enable the values few values for uh, hdfs Sorry, HDFS too high, sorry, too few. That's why we are not, you know, we are not able. So we're just going to, you know, upload one file and see whether uh, we'll be able to you know, upload from here. Just 
find for some text file. Right, let us let us upload this file and see whether we will be able to upload or not. Right, we got the file here, right? Just simply you can see whether we got the file or not. Right, if you see here, we uploaded from UI and we got the same, you know, we can see that from in the Haru file system, right? So, so he is working. So, finally, we have installed all the services. Uh, we have installed all the services and tested right so we have to test we have to test pig and scoop these two are the spending remaining else are completed okay thank you